Hey everyone, I think I'm live now. Hello. Just gonna wait for my YouTube to catch up. Hello, hello. And I need to mute my YouTube, otherwise there will be a terrible echo. So hopefully that will catch up soon. I'm at my sewing table today. There we go, and I'm muted. I hope you guys are all doing well today. I'm very excited because this is going to be a new series um, on my channel. And you may see my cat, Boots. She tends to walk around my sewing table. So that could happen while I'm live. Um, so if you see a black and white furry kitty, that's, that's Boots. <laughs> um, so, but today I'm going to be doing some fun stuff. Um, I wanted to do a sewing tutorials for quite a long time. So uh, today we're going to be doing a few different things, see what we have time for. And I'm just going to wait and see um, who else is going to pop in. <clears throat> but I also have these as well that I want to share with you guys. Hey, Diane. How are you, hon? I have um, two snippet kits. I still have my sorry snippet kit. I have five of these left. Let me just pull out what's in here. Let me just fix my computer here so I can see the chat. Hey, Mary. How are you, hon? So I still have my sorry snippet kit available. And you can see there's some beautiful pieces in here. Just absolutely gorgeous. These are $10 and they're so worth it. There's, I don't know, a lot of pieces in here. I guess I'm not showing the camera, am I? Um, there's some sari ribbon. Beautiful pieces. Look at that. Um, beaded fabrics, absolutely gorgeous. So I have the Sari uh, snippet kit still available as well. There's lots here, you guys, lots and lots and lots. So I still have those, I have five of those. And I also have some shabby chic snippet kits available as well. And there's a ton in these. And again, they're snippets, but they're beautiful pieces. And I know you guys can make use of these. So lots of beautiful laces and trims. Gorgeous pieces. And here there is doilies, rosettes, doily. There's a bit of dangle trim. Trim. Lots of beautiful pieces. And with the, the Sari kit, you get a free boho tassel. And with the um, Shabby Chic kit, you get um, some beautiful pearl trim, vintage pearl trim. So um, those are two really good little snippet kits that I still have available. I have five of each. If you're interested, let me know. Um, and they also come in these gorgeous vintage bags as well that you can alter. So just let me know, hit me up if you're interested. And like I said, today we're gonna to be doing a sewing tutorial. So let me move my machine a little bit closer. I hope that you're gonna be able to see, I'll try and do it that way maybe. Hopefully that's good enough. Um, you'll be able to see things. So what I wanna show you guys today um is some of my bags that i like to make which i guess i shouldn't have moved that there we're going to be doing um different material and i'm going to show you the difference between sewing with silk which this is a silk bag and it's made out of sari and i'm going to show you how to sew that and then we'll use a different material and a different needle and this is like a heavier shabby material. This is like um, upholstery weight almost. So it's a much heavier fabric. 
but I also have cotton here as well. So I'm going to show you the difference between sewing the different materials to make a bag. And there's a little bag I made yesterday too out of the silk. And there's different needles for those. And then um, I'm going to show you how to make my cute little flat flowers, I call them. They look like this. I love these. They're so cute. They're great for junk journals. Super cute. So I have some made out of sari, and I have some made with the shabby material. So these look really cool on your projects, and because they're flat, you can use these in your junk journal as a tuck or as a flower. Um, I love them. So that's what we're doing. Anybody have anything going on before I get started? We're going to sew with silk first, I think. Let me just move these out of the way here. So I have this sorry silk here. And I'm going to, it's super thin and gauzy. And you can't sew silk with a regular needle. So let me just share with you what I use for sewing silk. Needles come in different sizes. This is how my needles come. They come in these little packages. And for sewing um, silk, I use the 60s because the point is super fine. Now I also sew with denim needles and universal needles are the best ones to get. Let me just get these out. These are the denim needles and I don't know if you'll be able to see, but they're a lot thicker. They're a lot thicker than these ones. You can kind of see there, I hope, the difference. Anyway, there's quite a difference, but. The 60s are what I use for sewing silk. And then I have 80s and 70s, and these are just universal. And these are good for cotton and other types of fabric that are more common for sewing, like for quilting. You could use these universal ones, things like that. Now, that's what I use. Um, other people who are better sewers than myself. And these are the 70s. And I get them in a pack of five. And these were just $2.50. So not super expensive. And if you're just going to start out sewing, you're going to need a good supply of needles. Because if you're like me, you break them a lot. <laughs> and I've also got some uh, satin here that Kimmy sent me. So I'm going to try and use that today. So for sewing your bag, let's just move that for a second. I have just a irregular piece of fabric here on my little cutting mat. And I'm going to just square it up. And this I eyeball. I don't have to make it perfect. But just straightening up the fabric makes it easier. And you don't want to throw this piece away because I will take that piece and make a rolled rose out of that. So I keep all my little scraps like that. And it doesn't matter what size you do because, you know, having tiny little bags and large bags, that's all good. They're great for putting um, things in for happy mail, stuff like that. Okay. So I'm going to move this back now that I've squared that up a bit. Hopefully you guys can see. So the first thing you want to do on your bag is you want to sew a little seam here because you want to flip this part down um, so you have somewhere for your string to go through the bag. Now, people who are better sewers than me would probably iron this 
but because these are just loose little silk bags for goodies, I don't even worry about it if it's straight. Actually, I do want to straighten that edge up a bit. Let me just straighten that up a bit. That will make things better. There we go. I do recommend you get yourself a rotary cutter and a mat for sewing. It makes life a lot easier. And I'm just using regular white thread. Um, so you just want to fold the edge down on your fabric, just, you know, a quarter of an inch or so. You could press it, but I'm just going to finger press it because it's a small piece. If this was a really large piece, I probably would press it. It just makes it a little easier, especially if you're beginning to sew. You want to um, iron your pieces. But this will work for this. And then I'm going to put it under here. And I have my silk needle in here, so... That will be good. And I have my machine on a zigzag stitch. And you want to make sure your tension on your sewing machine is not that tight because silk tends to bunch if it gets too tight and then it becomes a real pain to work with. Silk and velvet are two of the harder materials to work with, I find. Okay, so. We're going to do a, just a stitch here for a second, and then you want to back stitch. And then you just keep on going till you get to the end. So hopefully my machine is not too loud. And you want to make sure that you're staying, you know, on your fat, on your fold there. I have lines on my machine over here that you probably can't see that I'm following to make sure that I stay. And just take your time. It do, you don't have to go fast. Silk is hard to work with, like I said, so. And sometimes it wants to bunch. So if it does that, I just lift my presser foot and straighten it out and put it back down. And then when you get to the end, you want to back stitch again just to lock your stitches in. Lift up your presser foot. And then snip off your thread. So now you've got the place for your string to go through. So now what you want to do is you want to fold this, um, the right sides together. So the part that you've just folded here is on the outside. And the reason you want to do that is so you have clean edges because you're going to sew down the side here and the bottom, and then you're going to turn it inside out and you'll have nice clean edges. So you don't want to sew over the two holes at the top here. You want to make sure you avoid that. You want to start sewing right at your edge there and then down because you need to leave those open for your string for your bag. So... I'm going to put this under here. Make sure your pieces are lined up. Start sewing and make sure to backstitch. And a project like this, they do not have to be perfect or anything. That's the fun, the good thing about a project like this. If it's not perfectly even, it doesn't matter because it's just a bag. See, my bottom is a little crooked, so I'm just going to end it. Now, here we're going to turn a corner. So when you go to turn a corner, you have to make sure your needle is always down. And you lift your presser foot, but your needle will stay down. And then you can rotate your project. But the fabric doesn't mess up because the needle stayed down and held it in place. So you have to make sure that your needle is down when you flip your project. 
And now you just continue on till you get to the end. And back stitch. So there we go. Okay, so now, now we've sewn the two sides because we folded it so we don't have to sew this side. But I want to just trim all my my strings. Hopefully you can see. So I'm just going to trim off all these strings that are hanging off. And then the the bottom edge, there's a lot of fabric there, so I'm going to cut it shorter. So when I turn it inside out, there isn't so much bulk at the bottom. And if this was a bigger project, I would clip these corners just on an angle, but I, I'm, well, I might clip that one. And that just kind of, when you flip it, it causes it not to have a lot of bulk in the corner. So now we can turn it inside out. And now you have a little bag. Just poke your corners out. And look how adorable. So now what would I use to run through there? Well, you can do anything you want. Um, let's see, what do I have? What do I have? I'll just use some sari, some white sari. Let me get a little pin so I can run it through. Where is my sari trim? There it is. I have some white sari. So all I do is I just take a safety pin or a bulb pin or something small, hook it on the end of what I want to run through my bag. And then in that opening that you created, you just want to push that through. And you just push it and gather it and then pull. And then your fabric, your your trim or sorry ribbon or whatever it is, or just regular ribbon is going to push itself through. So you have your drawstring. So that just takes a minute. So has anybody got any questions? Let me know if you're here, guys. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, do any of you guys sew? My machine is a old uh, Bernina Burnett, and it's probably about 30 years old at least. Um, it is not an electronic machine by any means. It is uh, like kind of an old workhorse, really. I taught both my girls how to sew on this machine, and uh, I love it. I love it. It, does, it doesn't have a ton of fancy stitches, but that's okay. It does its job, you know? So now I've got it through the other side. So now you just want to kind of pull it through. And then we'll cut sorry trim. And just pull that through. There we go. So now we have our little silk bag which how cute are these? And of course you can decorate them with one of those little flat flowers, right? You could put that right on top. And there's your bag. I hope that's in shot. Hang on one second. I right, saw, so have you ever washed sorry silk? No, well, I have hand washed it. I have not put it in my sewing machine, or in my sewing machine, my washing machine. Um, because I just find that there's so many fine little, um, threads that it gets really tangled in a washing machine. So I think hand washing would be okay. And then hang it out on your line. I wouldn't put it in the dryer because it would probably tighten it, the fibers up. So there's my first little bag. And you can just use Fabri-Tac to glue that on, which I'll do later. But remember if you're using Fabri-Tac or any kind of glue and silk, you need to put some cardboard or something on the inside of your bag because silk is so thin 
that if you used um, Fabri-Tac on that, the other side would glue as well. So then you'd be gluing your bag shut. So make sure that you put a piece of cardboard or something in your bag. Um, so, I mean, any of these would look adorable on here. Let's see, what else do we have? We have this one. That one's pretty. I like that one. So there, these are simple little decorations, which I'm going to get to, to show you. So that's how you do the bag, but uh, I've got another one here that I want to show you. This is some satin fabric that Kimmy sent me, and I want to try sewing with that. I haven't sewn with this yet. Hi, Angie. How are you, hon? So this one is in two parts. Um, it's not one big piece that I folded, so I want to show you how to do that. It's a little bit more complicated, and you have to roll your fabric down, you know, on both of them. But we're going to do that. So again, you fold the edge down and just finger press it. Because it's such a small little square, I'm not going to worry about uh, pressing it. Let me fold that there. And if you want to do colored ribbon, that's up to you. Now I'm still keeping the uh, 60 needle, 60 millimeter needle in here. Don't forget to back stitch. Back stitch at the end. How you doing, Angie? You doing good today? We finally got sunshine here today. So then this one, I want to make sure that it's going to be around the same. Yeah, that'll do it. So now we're going to do this one. <laughs> You're outside playing. You're so tired. Oh, yeah. Well, three-year-olds would take that out of you, I think. I'm glad you stopped by, though, Andrew. I hope it's a nice day and the sun is out where you are. So that's that side now. I'm going to snip that. And then we've got our two pieces, so you want your piece to be like that. So you want to put the, the right sides together. And then you're going to sew down the side. Remember to avoid the openings that you've just created at the top. And we're going to sew all the way around. Let me move my thread out of the way. And if you guys have questions, and I missed it in the chat, um, can you put them in caps, please? Hi, Michelle. How are you, hon? Remembering to backstitch. And remember, when you turn your work, your needle has to stay down. And then when you get to the end, back stitch again. Now, this is a great scrap project because you can use up all your uneven pieces and make bags. Now you can see here that my bag is very uneven here, so I'm just going to snip it and um, even it up. And then because this is silk, um, or pardon me, satin, 
it's got all these extra fuzzy threads here. So you want to try and get as many of those off as you can. Just makes it easier when you fold it. Oh, I'm glad you're doing better, Michelle. And then tr trim off all your extra strings. And then you're ready to turn it inside out. So you can see how simple these are. And then all you do is the same thing I did with the, the silk bag, is you just run your, your ribbon through it, and then you've got a drawstring bag. So how cute are these for, you know, jewelry? You know, you could put a beautiful locket in there for somebody's birthday with the, with the satin. This is gorgeous fabric that Kimmy sent me. And, uh, you know, or anything. Um, happy mail. Anything handmade. They're easy to do. Now, these are also easy to do with your Fabri-Tac as well. So you can make a um, no-sew version for yourself just the same way. Fold your edge down and then put your glue and then fold your fabric over and then glue your edges. And then uh, you've got a bag. Um, Fabri-Tac is great. It will hold. Just make sure you keep the, the two holes open. Now this one will have two holes because it was two pieces, whereas this one only has one because it was a longer piece that I folded over. So you can do um, a string on each side and then pull it this way and then the bag would gather in that way and you'd have strings on either side. So there's two different ways you can do that. So cool, right? Oh, thanks, Dan. Yeah, this is this one's from Kimmy. The silk, um, this stuff I got from Amour Fabriques. Do I care if you try making bags? Of course not, Angie. You make them, girl. I didn't invent these. <laughs> They're just bags. No, you make what you want, hon. I would love to see the bags if you make them. Oh, good. I'm glad you've been sewing, Michelle. I'm very happy to hear that. Just having a drink, guys, sorry. So that's basically the bags. So I think, you know, does anybody have any questions about those? Um, or do you want me to make another one? Like if you didn't get that, but they're really simple. I wanted to start off sewing a very simple project um, for the beginner people. And then, um, you know, you can go back and do, watch the video again later if you need help with it. I was going to do a basic, like, how to thread your machine and all that kind of stuff. But there's so many different machines. And my machine is old. It is not a new digitized machine. So my machine has its own personality. So, you know. Hi, Kimmy. No worries, hon. Look, Kimmy, I made a bag with the fabric you sent me. So pretty. So, so pretty. Hi, <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, no, you go ahead and make them, Angie. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, everybody's ideas are out there. You know, to me, there's no new ideas. It's just your spin on, you know, the idea. So... I want, like I said, I want to start off with something basic and now I want to show you how to make these, which these are also really simple and a really good beginner um, project that you can do. And they're great little fun embellishments for your journals and to decorate these bags. So this is another beginner and I call these my flat flowers. Yeah, it is, isn't it? I love the kimono bag. Yeah, it came out nice, very nice fabric to work with. And then next week, um, I'm going to show you how to make this, which is a fabric clutch. We're going to do this next week, which is a fabric clutch, which, believe me, is not as hard as it may look. Um, and this one is lined with fabric, so there's two layers. And I'm going to show you how to sew lace and do a bit of fabric collage 
with an image. And believe it or not, these are still beginner pieces. Um, I'm not a super advanced sewer. I know all the basics and I've been sewing for a long time, but you know, there is so many tutorials on YouTube, how to sew and how to do things probably better than I could ever teach you. But these are the things that I do and that I sew that I want to share with everybody. So next week we're going to do the fabric clutch and a bit of fabric collaging, which I love doing on my sewing machine. So um, and another great project to use up your snippets. So that'll be next week. Okay, so my little flat flowers. Let's make these. And because we've been doing colors, I think I'm going to do these shabby ones for you and show you how to do these. They're super easy to do. So all you need is your scrap fabrics again. Let me get some scraps out. Let's do this one and this one. We'll do them in blues this time. And you can see I've, they're just circles, but they're not even perfect circles. If you want perfect circles, make yourself a template um, to cut your circles. And I would recommend three or four layers. These ones have three, um, but you can do as many layers as you want, but I just find three layers is plenty. Um, so you could do like a small, medium, and large circle template for these, but I'm just going to eyeball it. No, I'm not going to do that one. Let's do these three. Let's do this on the bottom. So I'm just going to cut a, as I call them, circle-like object. And the good thing about these kind of flowers is you can make them any size you want. And I also want to show you guys how to do um, the ruffles and the gathered, um, the trims that I had last week. Oh, here's one. This I want to show you guys how to do with my ruffler. Super easy to do. All you need is the ruffle attachment for your machine. And then there's the gathering um, stitch that I did last week for BB Craft when I sewed the pearls on it. So there's that. All right, and then we're gonna cut a piece of this because I love this fabric. So I really hope this will inspire you guys to get your machine out and just play with it. Um, and try not to get frustrated. I know when you first start out sewing, you can get a little frustrated. I know I did. Um, but remember, there's always YouTube videos if you get stuck. So then this one is a little bit smaller. As you can see there, and let me put that there. You can see the second one is a little bit smaller, and then the top one will be even smaller again. And I got this fabric at Walmart. They sell fat quarters at Walmart, and really um, good prices at Walmart. And they have all different kinds of different fabrics there that you can get. So this one I want to cut a little bit smaller. Okay. All right. Let me put that over here. Yes. Yes, the ideas. You can do anything. Just sit with fabric and your sewing machine, and you can come up with all kinds of things. So now I've got my circles cut. Now on these ones, you'll see it's got a little edging on it here that I sewed around. And I used this. Now you can use yarn or anything. I just happen to have this stuff in my stash. Um, it's like a cording with a gold thread on it. Um, so I just happen to have that. But you can use wool. You can use anything. Um, I may just use this because I think it would be okay. It's got blue and stuff on it. So I think I'm going to do it. Um, so for a beginner, 
what I would recommend is put your machine on the zigzag. Oh, wait a minute before I go any further. This is still my silk needle. We have to change the needle. So if anybody doesn't know how to change a needle, it's very simple. You need a little screwdriver and you want to unscrew. You'll see a screw here for your presser foot and then there's a screw up here right here which my fingers on that's for your needle so you you want to turn it to the left because left lefty loosey righty tighty right <laughs> and you want to remove your silk needle i'm glad i remembered that so then i'm just going to put that back in here if i can get the package open there we go And then I'm going to get out my, my other needles, which these are the universal ones. These are the thicker ones, which is what you kind of want for cotton. And then when I'm sewing paper, I use denim needles because, you know, sometimes with paper, you're going through, you know, two or three thicknesses of paper and depending on what kind of paper it is. Um, so you need a good heavy needle. So I recommend a denim needle. Then your needle has a flat side and a round side. Now your machine could be different, but with my machine, the flat side goes towards me. So I put it up where it's supposed to be in that little hole. And then I just tighten the screw. Make sure it's good and tight because there's nothing worse than uh, sewing and having your needle pop out. Okay. So now everybody's going to watch me thread the needle on camera. Yes, I did use some of the sari that you sent me, Kimmy. I made a little bag out of it. Oh, is that going to go in? Look at that right on the first try. What do you know? So now we've got the right needle for the right job. That's really important. So, okay. Let me just pull my chair up a bit. So we're going to basically sew in a circle. Now, later on in tutorials, I'm going to show you how to free motion sew. But because this is just a beginner one, we're going to just do it with your zigzag stitch and your regular foot. So again, make sure your threads are, your bobbin thread is out and your needle thread is under the presser foot and you've put them to the back because you don't want them to the front um, or they get tangled. So you wanna make sure you push your threads to the back. So then you put your fabric under and I'm just gonna kind of go between this edge of this fabric and the top of the second fabric. So the zigzag is crossing over between the two of them. And we're gonna try and go around in a circle, but not too fast. And again, you need to back stitch. So back stitch a couple stitches now, as I'm going to sew, I'm going to slightly turn my, my little flower so I can go in a circle. Just very, but go slowly. And you can see I'm just using these two fingers to just kind of push it over that way. Making sure that I catch both fabrics. Now, if you find that you get stuck or it moves off, just make sure your needle is down. Lift up your presser foot and move your work. And then just keep on sewing. So now I want to lift that again and just turn it. And this is how you can go in a circle. And again, you want to backstitch. Okay, so... Now we're going to take that off and my scissors. Yeah, I recommend a denim needle for paper. Um, other people may find other needles work, but that's what works for me. So now I've got my three circles sewn together. So now what I want to do is I want to use some of this. Um, so if you're a super beginner, this might be a little hard for you, but it's not too bad. Um, so you want to put your... Make sure your strings are pulled pretty good because if you don't have a good length of your needle thread, 
pulled out. Like I've got a fair bit of needle thread here. Um, but if you don't, and it's like just hanging under your needle, the minute you start to sew, it's going to come out of the, the hole of the needle. So you need a good few inches of thread, I find, with my machine anyway. Then I'm going to put my work under here, and I'm going to take the edge of this um, yarn, and I'm just going to pop that underneath my presser foot, and then put my presser foot down. So now this is now trapped underneath my presser foot. Just let me get a drink. Sorry, guys. So now I'm going to do the zigzag stitch again and the same motion that I turned the flower, but I'm going to catch this yarn underneath, this in between the two zigzags. So this will be trapped in the middle of the zigzag. So here we go. And remembering to back stitch as well on this. And I want to try and go around the edge of my smallest fabric just so it kind of, um, you know, it frames it. And this is a good um, thing to learn for next week when we're doing some fabric collage because this type of thing is great. Make sure that you have a lot of slack on your ribbon or yarn that you're using. And again, you can lift your presser foot up and turn your work. Just make sure your needle is down. And you want to keep on sewing and turning. Don't go fast. Oh, let me put my needle down. And then I'm going to lift it up again and just turn it slightly. Lift it up, turn it. Oh, now, here's one of the sewing machine problems. My thread has popped off one of the arms, so I have to rethread my machine now. And machines do things like that just because they're stubborn. That happens. So now I just have to quickly rethread it. And sometimes when you're sewing extra thick pieces of fabric and adding things like this yarn, sometimes your sewing machine will go, oh no, I want to be a pest and make you rethread me and it'll pop off or just act up in a way and you have to stop what you do, pull your work out and then continue on. But that's okay. So here's where we're at right now. So I'm halfway. So now we're going to put this back under here. Start a little bit back where I was before so I don't have to back stitch now because it's just going to go over a bit of the sewing I've already done. Okay, so turn my work. Turn it one more time, and we're almost at the end. And then we're just going to back stitch. And there we go. So there we have that. And now I just need to snip the end where my yarn finished. So then we have this, which looks like this. This one I didn't bother putting a flower in the center because. Um, these pieces had um, nice motifs in the center from the sari, but this one doesn't, so I'm going to do what I did on this one and add a tiny little doily and a little flower. And I mean, you can do anything. Yeah, they're adorable, right? And if you can just sit and make them. And you know what? The cutting of the circles you could just do while you're watching TV, and then you'd have a whole stack of them. Then take them to your machine in the morning, and off you go, and you have a bunch of really adorable little flowers. So let's see here. So I've got all kinds of sizes of doilies here and little flowers. So I'm going to put a little doily in the center. Let me move that here so you can see. And then I've just got this bag of Michael's um, little ribbon roses. 
And I think these doilies I got from Nola in Nanny's Attic. I think that's where they came from. So just going to use my Fabri-Tac. Put a little thing of glue down. Put my doily down. A little bit more glue. And pop my ribbon rows down. I just need to hold that for a sec until the glue kicks in. And then trim off all your threads. Now the other thing you can do with these, because this is cotton, I can go around the edge and just pull the edge. And that will fray the edge really nicely. So you get a really cool looking shabby flower. And these are great, like I said, for your junk journals because they're flat. So they don't take up a lot of room in a journal. So I like that. Now, I will just give you a sneak peek of something because um, I, oh, watch my camera here. It's caught on my camera cord. Hang on. There we go. This is a junk journal that I am gifting someone I'm doing a swap with. So I don't want to show too much of it, but let me see if I can find, yeah, this is an envelope I made out of vintage wallpaper. And there's one of the little flat flowers on the back of the envelope. So you can use them for that. And then here's one I did on this page right here. And then it's got a little jewel, so I just use that as kind of the center. Really simple. Um, so they're great for junk journals. I love them. And there's another one I did. And this one I had a bunch of like gold loose threads. So I just kind of zigzagged over top of this one. And then these are some tags I did with just little pieces of uh, different fabrics. Just sewed them on a, a tag with the zigzag stitch. And then I added a yarn bow, sewed that on. So sewing machines are super handy for things like this. And I will do a tutorial on how to do these envelopes too, if you guys want, if you wanna know how to sew paper and things like that, I'll probably do a week of, um, you know, things like this paper, using coffee dyed paper, wallpaper, um, making paper embellishments. I've also done um, guest checks for junk journals. So yeah, there's a lot, lots and lots you can do. And then um, another tutorial that I'd like to do this summer is how to sew with your free motion foot and how to do, where is it now? free motion um, words and writing this says create here. And then I have another one in here somewhere. This one says boho. And then this one says inspire. Hi, Mary. So that was done with my free motion foot. So I can show you guys how to do that and how to make your own scripty words on your machine. So that'll be another tutorial. So I'm excited about that. Does anybody have any questions? How are you doing today, Mary? Oh, you never did the, the words, um, Diane? Or the paper and the envelopes? I love my sewing machine is my favorite favorite thing in my craft room and uh, I will also introduce you to my serger or overlock machine as it's called and I'll do some projects with that as well it is a beautiful day in Halliburton Mary were you in Halliburton Mary yeah the black flies yeah I don't know what they call them in the U.S. Do they call them like gnats or black flies or what do you guys call them there? Hey, Deanna. 
Well, do you have a sewing machine, Deanna? Because, you know, girl. If you need any help, you just give me a shout. Once you get going on it, it's it's fun to sew, I think. Um, especially with everybody that loves doing junk journals now. You know, sewing machines have kind of um, come back into fashion again, I think, in the crafting community because everybody loves the sewn edges on their journals and tags and things like that. Yes, they are nasty. Oh, you do call them black flies there too, Diane? Yeah, they're horrible here. And this is their season right now. So I'm staying away. I don't want to be outside. I don't want to be out at all. <laughs> so I'll make another one. Um, I'm not going to do sorry because I've already changed my needle. So I'll do another, um, maybe I'll do another pinkish one for you guys. Let's see here. We've got some pink fabric. So were you in Halliburton, Mary? Did you go to Tim's and get coffee? Yeah, it's amazing. We finally got sun today. <laughs> Yeah, it's best to stay away from the outdoors right now. My husband was out cutting the lawn yesterday and he was so badly bitten when he came in. He was not happy. Oh, you had to get blood work, did you? Okay. Little vampires over there, they are. Okay, we're just cutting circles. So let's see, that one might be a little too big, so let me cut that a bit smaller. And again, they're not perfect circles because I cannot cut perfect circles. If my life depended on it, not gonna happen. Oh, wow, you had two days in the 80s, and now it's 61. Oh, well, 81's a little warm, isn't it? Let's see. Oh, pardon my arm, but I think I want to use this fabric. My Paris fabric. Let's use a piece of this. This has some flowers right there. Okay. There we go. Pardon the arm. All right. So once again, this is going to be a simple one again. This is just going to be going around the edge. And then we're going to put the doily and flower on it because they're super fast to do. Um, so press her foot down and off you go. Maybe, if I can find my foot. I know I didn't backstitch there, but I'm going to just sew over top of it when I get to the end. I should have backstitched, but sometimes you forget. So you just keep turning it with your two fingers, or four fingers. <laughs> And look, my string popped off again. My machine seems to be having that issue lately. Actually, I was at the end, so that'll be fine. So now again, we're just going to do the... I mean, you could put that down if you wanted to, but I don't want to cover up the fabric. I still just like these little, little doilies. I think they're super pretty. And the little flower. 
I might trim that up too. It's actually cloudy here now, Mary. So again, I'm just using my Fabri-Tac. Putting that down. Oops, why did I put the lid on that? So I'm just going to trim this. Give it a little trim. And there we go. Super simple, super easy to do. And look, I've made lots of them, so many, and they're super pretty and fun to make. And there's the other one I made today. The 90s, oh my gosh, that would hurt me. So let me put my Fabri-Tac away. And then um, I think the other thing I just want to mention, because I don't know who was here, is I've got two snippet kits available still. They come in this beautiful vintage bag. I have five of the shabby chic kits. Um, and there's beautiful pieces in here. There's doilies, there's flowers, there's little pieces of beautiful fabric, beautiful laces and trims, dangles. Again, there's snippets. Nice big flower piece. Dangle, applique, pearl trim. You know, just lots and lots and lots of beautiful pieces in the snippet kit. And these are $10 each. I have five of them. Um, and with each $10 bag of snippets that there's tons, you can see there's loads here. Loads and loads and loads and loads of stuff. Lots of stuff. Look at this piece. This is one of my favorite places. I love it. So with each of those, you get a uh, beautiful strand of vintage pearls. Pretty, pretty. So that's that kit. And then, oh, there's my kitty cat. Then I have the Sorry Snippet Kit still. I have five of these left. And this has all of the beautiful Sorry beaded pieces in it. And these are $10 as well. These are gorgeous pieces. Look at that with the pearls. I love that. So pretty. Look at this one. Gorgeous. Which one do you want? The sari or the shabby chic, Kimmy? So that one. So either of those are available. You can just message me on Facebook. And again, you get the vintage bag with it. And with the Sari kit, you get a free um, boho tassel, which I don't have one made here. Um, but I do have a video on my channel where you can see the tassels. So that's available. Oh, you want the shabby chic? Okay, no problem. No probs. That one's yours. And I think that's it for today, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I had fun playing with all these goodies in my sewing machine and making these super pretty flowers and bags. I hope that I was able to um, explain to you how to do the bags because they are easy to do. Um, you just need to make a couple. You know, and then this these are the ones that I had made previously. And that's the sorry trim that Kimmy sent me. And then this was also a sorry. And I only had enough of this to make a bag. So I just made a bag because that was all I had. 
but I love it. It's like a, a pumpkin spice color. So pretty. Oh, thanks, Diane. And then here's my big shabby bag that I did. And this is um, thrift store material. So check your thrift stores, go through your stash, use up all your little pieces um, and make any size of these. They're fun to make and they make great gifts. And same with your flowers too. So super pretty. So I hope you'll give these a try. And if you guys need any help with your sewing, of course, you know how to reach me on YouTube here. Or I think most of you are my Facebook friends too. So, you know, if you ever need any help, just give me a shout. Oh, thanks, Deanna. Thank you, Mary. So, yeah, next week I'm going to show you how to do the fabric clutch. And we're going to do some fabric collaging, which I love doing. Um, and this is all, this was vintage fabric here. And this is a beautiful um, knot work doily that I use. So I'm going to use a lot of... Um, vintage textiles I think next week and show you how to work with them because there is a little bit of a trick to working with vintage fabrics because some of them are frail um, so you have to be careful when you're sewing them and you know how to cut them and things like that like this is a little snippet of a knot work piece so yeah that's what we're going to do next week is this beautiful fabric clutch with the lining so and believe it or not it is kind of a beginner project. I think I'm going out of camera shot. There we go. So, and I love this image. I love that image. And then um, I just print it off. When I print my images, I always type a few words as well, just for my, my own use, because I like to put script and words on my project. So, and then you just kind of sew it on. But this is all just different little snippet pieces that I've used here. So the snippet kit is great for this. Um, you just kind of attach your pieces one at a time, but I will show you next week how to do that. So if you wanna sew along with me, gather up an image and a bunch of snippet pieces and then some fabric for your clutch. And we'll do that next week. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you all for stopping by. And now I have my mess here. <laughs> Thank you for buying a kit, Kimmy. If you guys want a kit, just message me and let me know. And I hope you guys will enjoy the sunshine today because I know I'm going to. Thank you all for coming. Bye, guys.